In this class, we assume some basic familiarity with R. In this session, however, we will discuss some basic types of objects in R, such as uh, vectors and matrices that we'll see again and again in Bioconductor, and where it's important to have some basic understanding of uh, how to subset and how to operate on these objects. So there's a big class of objects in R called atomic vectors or vectors. Atomic vectors are vectors where every single uh, element is of the same type. For example, uh, a sequence of um, numbers from 1 to 10. Uh, vectors, all vectors can have names. Um, and we can see what the class is, in this case an integer. And we can subset vectors with a one-dimensional subsetting. Uh, that means we have a single uh, set of index vectors, or we can uh, give it a set, now that it has names, we can uh, index it based on its names. Names do not have to be unique on vectors. That's a source of uh, frequent uh, uh, problems. Uh, let's take an example here, um, where we set the names of x to be C A. So we have non-unique names here, and we will say x give us the uh, element uh, of x with the name A. We only get a single element back, not both of the elements. We get the first match. That um, can be very confusing. And you can check whether there's duplicated names and vectors using unique or duplicated, which are uh, base R functions you should learn about. But there's also a little convenience function called any duplicated. It returns uh, either zero or the index of the first duplication. In this case, it's the second element in the names vector. Uh, where we where we see the first duplication. So getting a, a good hit back is uh, getting any duplicated equal to zero. Let's try to say that. And now we get zero back. Now uh, in R, you can, uh, in R, there's a, there's a slight difference between integers and numerics. Numerics allow you to hold uh, uh, numbers of arbitrary precision, and integers are standard integers. Uh, that's a little confusing, and it's something I would prefer not to spend too much time on, but we are going to, in Bioconductor, sometimes run into limits associated with integers. So I feel we have to have a brief discussion about it. Let's say that uh, we set x equal to 1. This looks like an integer, but when I do it like this, I actually get a numeric back. Unlike if I set x equal to this function here, where I get a set of integers. So how do I how do I represent a single um, how do I represent a single integer in uh, on the command line? I say x equal to 1, and then I uh, uh, put a capital L afterwards. That's something you just have to know uh, that this is how you do it. So here we get a class x, and we get an integer back. Now, there's a limit to how big integers you can represent in R. It's given by uh, uh, a machine constant. Uh, you get various uh, machine limits out of R by writing dot machine. And in this case here, it's the integer.max. It's a big number. It's equal to 2 to the 31st minus 1. We can check whether that's equal to the machine dollar integer. It's true. Um, and uh, what is it roughly equal to? Let's round it. Uh, let's divide it by 10 uh, by a million. And let's round it. So it's roughly equal to uh, 2.1. Uh, billions. This is a number that's slightly smaller or smaller than the size of the human genome, and this is why we are going to run into limits associated with vectors. There's something in R called uh, long uh, vectors, which are uh, vect 
let me back up a little bit. This is a limit for uh, how big numbers you can have in an integer. It's also a limit for how long a vector can be in R. So you can't have more than roughly more than 2 billion, 2.1 billion uh, elements in a vector unless it's something new called a long vector that R has introduced recently and where we, where we still are waiting to get kind of pervasive uh, support for long vectors through all functions in R. So you're sometimes going to run into this limit, and uh, especially if you add up a lot of uh, bases from the human genome and you get up to more than 2 uh, billion, and the solution is usually you convert the integers into numeric using a function called s.numeric. Um, and basically th this will fix it. Let's now discuss matrices. Matrices and I is another uh, very important uh, fundamental uh, class. And uh, matrices are constructed using the matrix function. They are two dimension and we give it a number of rows and a number of columns. Rows. Now we get a three by three matrix back. It can have uh, row names and call names. And like vectors, the row names and the call names does not have to be unique. And like with vectors, having non-unique row names or call names is a frequent source of errors. A matrix is two-dimensional. You will get the dimension using dim, and you can also get separately the number of rows and the number of columns. Oh, the number of columns. You subset matrices using two-dimensional subsetting because it has two dimensions. We can say, we can, we can get a set of, the first dimension is rows, the second dimension is columns. This here gives us the first two rows. This here will give us the first two columns. And we can do both of them at the same time. We can also subset using uh, characters. So here we get the first, uh, the first uh, uh, row back. And note, we don't get the first row back as a matrix. We get it back as a vector. Sometimes you really want to have a one-dimensional matrix or a matrix with a single row and three columns back in this case here. And you do that by using this hidden argument. I, could, I would call it a hidden mark argument to, uh, to the subsetting operation where I can say drop equals false. And now we get a one by three matrix back. You can also subset matrices using matrices. And a typical case is I have a matrix and I want to subset it using some logical operator. So for example, I can say, give me all the elements in the matrix where the matrix is greater than five. And I get a, a vector back. So matrix subsetting like this uh, loses the dimensions of the matrix. We get a vector back, which kind of makes sense if you reflect a little bit about what, ha what happens. Matrices in R behind the scenes are just really long vectors. So unless you do, you use long vectors, there's also a limit to how big matrices can be. Matrices are column first, so that means when we, uh, when we created the uh, matrix, let's go back up here, we got 1 to, to 10, 1 to 9. We fill up the first column, then we fill up the second column, then we fill up the third column. Uh, we can do the same thing, and then we can say by row, uh, equals true. So now we're going to fill it up by row and now we fill up yeah, by row. The next basic object in R is something called a list. And a list is just a list of different objects. There's no requirement that, um, that uh, the objects are even of the same kind. So we construct it using the list operator. Let's, get, let's let, it, let, let it be a named list. The first thing, we're going to take some random numbers. Uh, the next thing is going to be some letters. We're going to have five of those. And then the last thing uh, could be a function. Let's say mean.
So now we get a list out of three objects. We have three numbers, we have five letters or five characters, and we have a function. So there's no requirement that they that they make sense in any way. Uh, since they can have uh, names, we can refer to these um, with the names, uh, like uh, with a, let's back up for a moment. Uh, subsetting with matrices works in many ways like a vector. You can think of a list in a way like a vector. We can get the first two elements. We can even get the first element. And notice here that when we, when we ask for the first element, we get back a list with one element. In order to get the element itself, we have to use double brackets. So that gives us, a, that gives us directly the vector, whereas the x with one bracket uh, gives us a list with one element in. There's a crucial difference between these two things, and it pays to get your head wrapped, wrapped around this. You can also, when it has names, you can uh, refer to the components in the uh, matrix by the, uh, in the list by their names. Of course, you can do it in the classic way, uh, like we do with vectors, but you can also use the dollar operator. One thing that's a little bit surprising is that you can... Um, uh, you have partial matching when you do these things here. So let's say here names of x, let's call them c, a. Comma, letters, comma, c. So I can write x dollar letters, but I can also write x dollar let. No, nothing is called x dollar let, but it does partial matching. And that can be a little bit dangerous, especially if uh, we have two uh, names that are almost the same, I write x dollar let, and I get null back. This is very, very uh, confusing at first, and, uh, and, and, and it's also another uh, possible source of errors. Uh, one way to get around it is you use the single bracket notation. If you do the single bracket notation, you don't have partial matching. Sometimes you want a list where each element of the list is a single number. And you do that using the as.list function. You give it a vector of three numbers, and back we get a list with one element in each component of the list. List can be, um, uh, for, for list we have, uh, we very often have list that where each element in the list is of the same type. Let's make an example. Uh, Arnold 3. Uh, so here we have a list where each element in the list is a big of numbers. And we want to use the same function on each of the element. This is something we do all the time in Bioconductor. The basic function for that is called lapply. We take the list and we apply some function to it, and we get a list back where each element of the list is a function applied on each element. Quite often, in, in, in this particular case where the function returns a single number for each case, we often want it really as a vector instead of a list. One way of doing that is by unlisting the list, or more frequent, you use isApply, which stands for simplify apply, and it really just simplifies the output. It requires that the output taken on each element of the list is kind of either a number or a vector of the same length. The final type of object we're going to discuss are data frames. Data frames are fundamental for uh, data analysis, and it allows us to hold uh, uh, observations of different types. So let's say we have a variable called six, which say, let's say, hit there. Uh, let's just uh, execute it from over here. Uh, we have a data frame, it has two variables, six and eight. Let's look at it. We have six and we have eight. So this is a type where we uh, can have different, like, like lists, we can have uh, elements or components of this uh, object that has different types. This would not be possible with a matrix. Uh, data frames are naturally kind of column oriented. We can we can get their columns by uh, using x dollar six. 
But we can't say, let's say there were row names on the matrix, we can't use the dollar notation to get the rows. This is because frequently what we want in a data frame is get a single column. The way we think of data frames is that the columns are variables and the rows are observations or different samples. We can use uh, single brackets and double brackets here to get, uh, to get uh, uh, a specific uh, 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 column, but we can also subset the matrix or the data frame in exactly the same way as we are used to for matrices. One specific uh, thing with data frames is that the row names are required to be unique, and that's actually kind of nice. It also is something that slows down data frames when you have very big data frames, uh, but it's pretty nice. Uh, they have to have row names, they have to be unique, but the row names can be one to three as in the example we have here, where you can kind of think of them as not really having row names. Underneath it all, a data frame is really a list where each component in the list is of the same length. And that means we can do a couple of tricks, uh, like we can use is apply and ill apply and list on, on data frames and we apply them to the different columns. So something I use a lot is I is apply class over the data frame uh, in order to figure out what class is, it, it, is each column. And I get back that six is a factor and eight is a numeric. The final subject of this session is gonna be conversion. We are frequently in the case where we have an object of a specific type and we wanna convert it into another type. So let's take the data frame here. Let's say we wanted the matrix out of the data frame. We can use s.matrix, which casts the data frame as a matrix. Notice it's a matrix now, but it's a character matrix because it cannot convert it into a numeric matrix without uh, losing the first column or the first column would be in a in the same way as I can convert the matrix into a list and I get a list that looks like this and in this way there's a lot of as dot something functions which are part of base R these are useful and 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 used again and again now in bioconductor we often have very complicated objects and we kind of want to do the same thing but for very complicated objects and for that, we don't have as dot something function, but we have a general function that's inside the methods package. And the function is just called as, and the way you use it is as object and whatever you wanna cast it as. So this here is very similar to the as dot matrix, but it works for very general types of objects. So matrix could be some of the many different new types of objects we learn about in Bioconductor. And uh, we can we and we can cast between them using the as function.